Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with another comparison video. Now, what I'm going to compare are colored pencils. So, because I'm on my glass mat, we're going to have some noise, so I do apologize. Now, I've chosen five sets of colored pencils to compare. Here is all of my side notes that I am going to make. I am not a color pencil artist. I will never profess to be one. This is my medium of choice. I like to color with colored pencils. They do take longer to color with. I like to say that if we compare the coloring time to alcohol markers, it would be double. So if you are taking an hour to color your images with alcohol markers, your colored pencils will take anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. That is what I have found. I will also make a statement that I am not a professional, meaning I'm sure I'm going to state something incorrectly. What I am going to state is I use colored pencils for card making and also in my colored books, okay? These are things that I have found that work for me. This is the information that I have gathered and this is how I work with them. Cannot stress that enough, okay? Too many times, sometimes we do these comparison videos and somebody will come across and say, you stated something incorrectly. Okay, you know what? I put it in my terms and how I work with them. If someone should have a question, please, you can leave those down below and I will get back to you or restate what I meant to say so that it's understood or I don't cause too much confusion. I have both wax and oil-based pencils here. To me, it does not matter what's wax and what's oil-based. And here's why. I do not like to use Gamzol. I do not like to use any blending solutions. If I'm using a blending solution, it is in the form of a pen. I will not be using that this today. It's by Finesse. It's a colored pencil blender pen, but this is formulated to work with waxed based pencils. There is a difference if I use this on my Faber-Castell oil-based pencils. Now, don't get me wrong. All colored pencils are wax base. There's, with Faber-Castell, they do have an oil component to it. These do not have the oil component. Okay? I will not be showing how these blend with this. Okay? What the pencils that I'm going to show you are the Blick Studio Pencils, I'm going to talk about the Arteza colored pencils. I'm going to talk about the Spectrum Noir color blend. I'm going to, of course, discuss Prisma color. And I'm going to then also talk about the Faber Castell. What I am going to be doing with these pencils is I will be working on um, Bristol paper, Bristol smooth, um, or mixed media. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to think to reach for, but it will all be the same paper, probably my mixed media, um, drawing pad. It's my favorite paper. What I use to blend when I work with colored pencils are one of two things. I either use my white pencil so if it is my wax pencils, not my Faber-Castells, I will use my Prismacolor white. I always keep this white pencil by Prismacolor on hand 
And I always make sure when I get down, I always buy a box of 12. So there's always plenty of these on hand for me. If I'm working with my Faber-Castells, I will use, of course, the Faber-Castell white pencil to blend. Again, you've got an oil component in here, so I will keep the oil to the oil. This colored pencil for the Prismacolor will be able to cover all of these. The other thing that I use a lot to blend is a colorless blender. Now, there's one of two that I will use. My first go-to is the Prismacolor colorless blender. Okay, now I will use this for all pencils going across, even the Faber-Castell. There is another out there. It's by Derwent, and I know Dick Blick has one as well. So this is Derwent's blender. Again, it's the same thing. It is a colorless blender. It is a pencil that does not have pigment. That's all this is. These are the two items, either a white pencil or a colorless blender. This is what I use to blend my colors. I will sometimes pull in this pen, but I will not be showing this. I'm only going to use the two things that I use most, okay? So let's talk about the range of each of these and then I'll flip over and speed it up just a little bit to show you how these look blended and then I'll come back. Trying to make the video short is not going to happen. Okay, so let's first talk about the Dick Blick. I'm also just going to grab some paper here real quick. My favorite paper when I work on colored pencils is my Strathmore Mix Media, and it comes in toned blue, gray, and tan. This is just like the pencil toned gray and tan, um, except this is thicker. So when I die cut this or cut this down, I've got good strength. I don't have to take the thinner sheets and mount them onto a heavier cardstock. This does it. So I am going to be using this, actually. This is my favorite. I get this paper, um, this size, it's 184 pound. Um, there's 15 sheets in this and I can get two card fronts out of each. So that's a total of 30. Um, this is in their 400 series. Again, I do get the toned gray, tan and blue and this is about i think it's like five dollars per pad if i'm not mistaken i'll have it linked below but it is my favorite um paper okay so i'm going to be drinking a lot of water so i apologize if you should hear that now I'm going to take those sheets and I'm just going to cut them down real quick in half. Because then I will have five pieces that I need. And I know, my screen is shaking. Okay. All right, so we've got our papers ready. So let's talk about the Dick Blick the Dick Blick pencils first. This is the case. This is what it looks like. Okay. I'm just going to move these up. I don't want to break them because I break many pencils. It's what I do. So this is the case. This is what it looks like. I do have to keep a rubber band around it. Um, it's a very, the case, the lid does come off. It's not hinged. So to make sure this doesn't come off and my pencil spill, I do put just an elastic band um, around it. This is your case. You've got two layers. These are your colors. There are some metallics in there. It does have its own white. 
and you can get a colorless blender for the Dick Blick. Now, these retail, of course, at Dick Blick Studios um, online. They have sets of 12, 24, 36, 48, and 72. Do you need to get all 72 colors? Absolutely not. I think with any colored pencil set that you want to try or look at, the 24 and the 36 count will serve you well. Again, 36 is plenty of colors to get your blends. Okay, so I will not tell you, yes, you have to get all of the colors. It's something that I suffer from. Okay, so please keep that in mind. So again, they have a 12, a 24, a 36, a 48, and a 72. The 72 is just under $50, and the 12 is just under 10. So that is the range that you have when it comes to the Blick Studio Artist Colored Pencils. These are wax-based, and they can be purchased individually for 98 cents. So when you use one of these colors up, you can buy that color individually and not have to buy another set. Okay? So, good price point on this one. So the next set that I'm going to speak on, as soon as I can get to it here, is the Faber-Castell. These, of course, are the polychromos. All right. They come in this tin. This is the 120 set. Now, just like the uh, Blick Studios, these do come in a 12, a 24, a 36. Then they jump to a 60 count and then the 120. The 120 is their largest set. That set retails, and again, my price is coming from Blick Studios, is a, just under $165 for this entire set. Now, if for the 36, again, you really only need a set of 36. That set is just below $60. So you can get a set of 36 colors of your fabric castells for under $60. These two can also be purchased individually. So you don't have to buy another set. This is what they look like inside. They have these wonderful bands that come off of their trays. And there is a total of three trays again. There's 120 colors in here. It does come with a white in their set. And again, to purchase them individually, they are $2.23 when you purchase them individually. And depending upon the pigment, it could be a little more. These are the ones that have oil with the wax that's going on with these um, colored pencils. Okay, so these are one of the more popular ones. Um, they, they will work very well, but again, I want to show you options for you. Okay, so the next set I'm going to talk about are the Prismacolors. So I do hold my Prismacolors in one of these cases. Sandy Alnack had shown one of these cases. Um, and it is a wonderful case. Now, the set that I am showing you here is the set of 150. So they're all not in here. This case does not handle all 150 pencils. So it really drives me crazy because I'm missing some of them. And it's really the grays that I'm missing. Um, I have found a case, though, that will handle it. And I will show it to you. But... I do like this case. Um, it is a very nice case. Um, it's very rugged. But Prismacolors, this set is my, the Prismacolors are my favorite. I This is what I actually started out with um, when it came to colored pencils eons ago. And I will just say that. Um, 
I started using colored pencils when I was actually in elementary school, which is a very long time ago. Um, so these, these are where I started. So I do have that loyalty because I did start with these. Um, but again, I'm going to show you all the options. So when it comes to the Prisma colors, they too do have their sets for 12, 24, 36, 48. And then they also do have the 150 set again, which is what I'm showing you here. You're just not seeing the grays. Um, they have a wonderful range of all the grays um, when it comes to uh, the cool grays, the warm grays, the French grays, and the natural grays. Okay. So your 150 count set, again, at Dick Blick, that's where I'm quoting this price from, is just under $90. It's showing as $88.99 for 150 pencils. Whereas your 48 count is under 40 and your 36 is under 20. So you can get a very high quality or what people consider to be a high quality. When people say the name or the term colored pencils, yes, people think of Prismacolor. People think of the fabric Castells. It's the first thing that comes to, their, to everyone's mind. That's all I'm referring to. Okay. Um, that is, these are at a wonderful price point. Okay. And they have different levels. They have a student grade, which is their scholar. Um, set and then they have their artist grade, which means the core is just a little bit softer. Okay, so those are the Prisma colors. The next set I'm going to talk about is the Spectrum Noirs, the color blends. Now, for these, they actually have five different sets. Okay, and I'll try to get them all in my screen, which of course I won't, but I'll try to block that out. Let's try. Can I do it? Yes, I can. So we can do this a little bit. So you have your primaries, your essentials, shade and tone, florals, and then you have your naturals. Okay. So they have five different sets. There is no duplicate across the sets. So what they did, they just put them into color families. Now, each of these sets and I will quote the price from Crafters Companion website. Each of these sets have 24 colored pencils in them. The cases are secured. You don't have to put any bands around them. They come with this piece of foam, very thin foam. And they look like this. They're just one level. Each set each one of these sets are $35.95. Let me try that again. $34.95. So $34.95. There's also two sets available in 12 count. Now you're not going to get all of these colors, but they do have two 12 sets available. Um, and they are $19.95 each. You do not need to get all of these sets. These are the colors that you will see at the bottom, at the bottom of each of the boxes. So you can see how your colors will come about. So again, five sets with 24, you're just under it's 96. There's 120 colors when it comes to these. Okay, these are waxed base as well, but these are also not available individually. So if there is a color, their their idea was actually is when it comes to the primaries, these are the colors that you would use the most. Now you can see there's the, an image that they colored with just using the primaries. So you do get a nice range of colors. The essentials are the second set that you would use the most. So again, if you run out of one of these colors, you can't buy it individually. 
you would actually have to get this entire set again or use something else that would coincide with it. Okay, so not available individually. And I'm sorry, for the Prisma colors, let me go back. I apologize. You can purchase them individually as well as the Faber Castell and the Blick Studio. They are a dollar twenty-nine purchased individually. So I do apologize. I had to go back. So the only ones that you can purchase individually are the Prisma Colors, the Faber Castells, and the Blick Studios. The Spectrum Noirs you cannot. The last set that I'm going to talk about is the Arteza. And I'll also show you this case. So they have two cases out. They have one with all of the cute splatters here. I did purchase this myself. And just so you know, I know some of you know that um, Arteza does send me products to review for them. They did not send me the pencils. I'm sorry. They did send me this case. Okay, this case they did send me. I purchased a second one, um, but I purchased the sets of colored pencils that are sitting in here. So the set that is sitting in here is they just recently came out with a 120 count set. They also had a 72 count set, which they still do. Both of those sets are sitting in here. This case will hold 192 pencils. So, of course, that's the 120 and the 72 set. <clears throat> and yes, it does fit in here. This is proof. Um, the case itself is $18.99. And there's always sales, and I'll have a coupon down below. But um, this case is 19. It's a nice thick foam. This is great to hold your color pencils no matter what set that you have. Um, the bands are nice and strong, so you can fit three pencils within each section. Um, so again, that's that's the case. There are 64 slots to fit three pencils each. So that's the case that I'm seeing, that I'm using here. Again, they have a 120 count. That is just under $70. It's $69.99. They also have the 72 count, which is $28.98. They have a 48 count that's triangle shaped, which is in a cylinder tube. They are $13.99. And then the tin, like the 72 and the 120, they are $18.99. Okay, now I've been sent the 48 triangulars, and I have worked with those before. Okay, but again, the two sets that are in here, the 120 set and the 72 set, they did not send them to me. I made that purchase. They did, however, send me the case. I want to be clear with that. And I also want to be clear that when it came to all of the other sets, they are sets that I have purchased myself as well. Nobody is asking me to do this review, although I have told Arteza that I will do this since I have them. Okay? So just be clear. These are waxed base as well, and these are not available for individual purchase. All right, so those are the sets that we are going to go through. Okay, those are the sets that we're going to speak on. So again, here are the Dick Blick, here are the Artezas, these are the Spectrum Noirs, these are the Prisma colors, and these are the Faber Castells. I did not choose the same colors. I've got purples, I've got pinks and reds, I've got aquas and teals, greens and a blue, and I've got periwinkles and whatever other colors you want to talk about here. All right. These are what we're going to go through. The sharpener that I like to use is a handheld metal sharpener. Now, it can be any 
metal handheld sharpener. This is from my quilters days. And this one here I did get from Dick Blick. It's called, I think, Mapped, M-A-P-E-D. Um, this is a phenomenal sharpener, and I think it's under $2. Um, I do like others, like I do like the Prismacolor one, but I just like to keep this bowl here, have the pencils here, because I do like to have a sharp point. All of these pencils also do come sharpened. Prismacolor is sharpened a little differently. And this is what I mean. You can tell how short that is. I like a long, an elongated um, point on my pencil. So I will sharpen them. I do not like to use an electronic sharpener. I think I have more control when it comes to a handheld. I think an electronic one just goes through everything way too fast. Um, the Artezas are very odd too. When they come, they come elongated, but they're really cut off. So they've got a very fat head. So I will sharpen them to get a point as well. What I am going to do is I am going to pull my paper in and I am going to use one of my pit pens and all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box and I'm going to draw two of them. Well, you know what? I lied. I'm going to, I'll throw this in. I'll put this in. So I'm going to draw three boxes on each of these pieces of paper. Now it's probably too big. And you will see each of these pencils using a white pencil, a, and I'm going to use for my blender, I'm only going to use the Prismacolor blender. I will use the Faber-Castell white with the Faber-Castell pencils. For everything else, I'm going to use my Prismacolor. And I will use this across all of these pencils as well. Okay, so there's going to be three boxes for each. And I will mark on the bottom the type of pencil that this is for. I'm going to get these set up. And then I'm going to switch over to the voiceover because I'm just going to speed this up just a little bit for you. Okay, real quick. I'm just going to real quick come in. I changed my mind. I want to use white um, cardstock. And that is what I'm using here. I actually found my stamp from Waffle Flower. So you can see the white colorless pen. Each one is set up that way. And I have the identifier of each of the pencils down on the bottom all right and that's the sheet that I'm going to use all right the cardstock that I am using is the Bristol smooth cardstock I like a paper with a tooth when I am working with colored pencils um, so if you use your Nina solar if you use the recollections white it's fine all right I just will always go with Bristol um, or something specific with that. So I did choose to go with the Bristol. Okay, so I'm going to do these three. Now what I'm going to do, just so you know, before I go to the voiceover, I'm going to color in here so that you will see what they look like if I don't use the white, if I don't use the colorless, if I don't use the pen for each of those. And then I'm also going to put the color in here so that you can see what it does when I put the white pencil over the colorless blender pencil, and then the pen. So you'll always see what it looked like originally. I'm going to do that now for each one, and you're going to see all of that. I'm just going to go over into a, a voiceover and just speed it up just a little bit as I talk through it. Okay. 
All right, we are in hyperdrive now. So I am, I used my uh, Gina K Amalgam Ink Black to stamp all of my images. And I've sharpened, if you remember, all of my pencils. And remember, I am using a Bristol paper. Now this is the Canson XL Bristol um, paper, the vellum version, okay? It doesn't matter if it's the vellum or the smooth. I just like a paper with tooth. Um, now, you you will get the same results, very similar results, if you use Nina Solar White cardstock, if you use the Recollections, whatever cardstock you use, the Desert Storm, and so forth. Okay, I just like a paper with tooth. Now, you can see I'm starting out with the Blick Studio pencils. And again, I'm using both of these boxes. The top box... The, the skinnier one, you're gonna, I'm going to keep it the way that it looks, but you're going to see each of the colors. You're going to see them close together, but I'm not going to use the white pencil or the colorless blender or the pen, the finesse pen, um, on them. I want you to see what that looks like and the difference that you get when you use these three methods to blend. Again, these are the three methods that I enjoy. If you enjoy Gamzol, try this the same way. You'll, you'll get similar results. Um, I do not like to use Gamzol. When I did use a solvent, it was usually baby oil that I used. Um, but these three methods, this is what I'm used to. I very rarely today use the baby oil. So I, the way that I use colored pencils is what I wanted to show you the comparison in. There are other videos available for you where people are using Gamzol or something else to blend their color pencils, and I encourage you to look for those. But again, you can see for the white pencil, when you use that, it creates a streaky blend, which is something that I like. It depends upon what I'm using that for. When it comes to a colorless blender, it it moves that pigment around, okay? It, it blends it more in a more smoother fashion. And again, I'll review these at the end once we're done. And then, of course, when it comes to this pen, and again, I don't know what the component is in this pen, I have the feeling it's alcohol, of a very low percentage of alcohol. I am smelling that, um, but I don't know if it's something else mixed with it and they just added the alcohol to give the, the odor to it. I don't know, so I apologize. And I'm sure it states it somewhere, um, but I just never researched it. It was just something that I came across um, when it came to that. So moving on, keep I keep moving through. So again, I've already done the Blick Studios. I've done the Spectrums. Um, I've done the Artezas. Now I'm on the Prisma colors. I'm just going to sharpen a color, a couple of my colors. Here I'm going from greens to blues. Um, you can see that white. It it continues to give you that streaky look. You can see that colorless blender just kind of fills in. Almost, just like the white pencil did, and that pen just creates that smoothness. Almost very similar, in my opinion, to the colorless blender. Next up is our Faber-Castell. Now remember, our Faber-Castell is an oil base, but it does also have a wax base as well. Okay, all colored pencils have a wax base. It just depends on the level. I am using, for all the other pencils, again, I use the Prismacolor White. For Faber-Castell, I'm going to use their white pencil, okay? So just keep that in mind, all right? So now, back to the live, and we will now slow down. Okay, everyone, so I am back. So these are the five different cards that we made, because again, we reviewed five pencils. We have the Dick Blick, we have the Artezas, the Spectrum Noir, the Prismacolors, and we have the Faber-Castells. Now, 
when it comes to the results, one of the things that I need you to keep in mind is I chose colors that, of course, will blend well. But I did also want to have a range. And what I mean by that is when I use colored pencils, so let's say I'm doing a floral and I'm doing the leaf, I will go from an extremely light green. I may not even use a white to blend. I may use the light green, but a very, you know, pale green like this, and I will take it to a dark blue. That's what I'm representing here. You can, as long as you're putting colors together that blend well, then they're going to blend. You can also use black as the darkest for your shade. So again, it's the, it's the same principle almost in alcohol markers where you can have these colors that come together that you wouldn't think. Again, a dark shade for reds, if you're doing it for Christmas time, for me would be brown or purple, not a deep red. So that's what I was showing here. So for this one, for the Arteza, I chose a peachy pink, a pink and a red. For this one here, I chose a light purple, a dark purple, and a deep blue. I chose an aqua, a light blue, and a mid-tone blue here. I went with a, a light or an olive green, a dark olive green, and a dark indigo. And then for this one, I went with pair of periwinkles with a dark indigo as well. So again, I wanted you to see that spectrum. So let's look at each one individually. So if I'll, and I'm going to bring this up. So this is the Dick Blick. So you can see the white pencil does give you a nice blend. And what I want to show you is, is no, it's not going to be a perfect blend. But what you can see here is that white does move and flatten out that color. Look how it looks up here and look how it looks down here it fills in and it really moves it. I do like the fact that you get great movement when it comes to the white pencil. You also get that movement when it comes to the colorless blender. Now the colorless blender did a great job blending this all together, even more so for the white. There are reasons why I use my white colored pencil and the colorless blender and there's reasons why I will choose between the two and we'll talk about those once we go through and then of course here's that pen by finesse I got mine on Amazon and again there will be a link to all of my Amazon favorites I just have them in there all together and you'll see them in there you get three in a pack but you can see that pen moves this as well I don't know what's in the pen I think it's like a Gamzol or an alcohol. There is a slight odor to it, but again, it's with a cap. So I can't tell you what's in there. So those are how the three. So again, not being blended at all. And you can see how they react to the white, the colorless, and the pen. And these are the Blick pencils. For the Arteza, so again, this is how they blended with the white pencil. And again, the white pencil was used for the first four by Prismacolor. I only use my Faber-Castell white for the Faber-Castell pencils. So color did move really well and blend well for the Arteza with the white pencil. It also moves extremely well with the colorless blender. I've got... I can hardly even see that line and then they did very well with the pen so I really like the way the Artezas blend out using the three methods that I will use they do a great job they are very comparable again I am just showing you your options and letting you know the prices I'm not going to say which one's better than the other? Because honestly, they all did what they were supposed to do. Next up are the Spectrum Noirs. Here's how they look with the white pencil. Now, they blended, they blended well, but 
they're I don't know if they blended too well. Now that could have been because of the color that I chose, um, or what. But I mean, it 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 blended, but not as well, in my opinion. Same thing with the colorless blender. Um, it blended, but it did better with the colorless blender than it did with the white pencil. And then here is the pen. Now, when I use the pen, it almost removed the color completely. It did, the pen actually removed where the pen for these two did not remove the pigment. It held on to the pigment. But for the Spectrum Noirs, I lost a lot of the pigment when it came to that. You can just see, and you can really tell with that dark blue. For the Prisma colors, Again, here's that white pencil. White pencil really does a great job just blending those colors out, shifting them. This is what they look like before. Even with the white pencil, you can really see the definition between the two greens. This is what it looks like with the colorless blender. Again, great job. Line is gone. You can see that green moved into the blue. The blue crossed back over. We've got a beautiful blend going on. And it did really well with the pen as well. Again, a good blend. And I did not lose my pigment with the pen. All right. So again, these are the Prisma colors. And this is how they look with those three options. Finally up is the Faber-Castell. So here's how it did. And I used their white pencil. So I kept the Faber-Castell white with their colored uh, pencils. So it did the same thing. It moved really well. It shifted those colors nicely. They really, it really drug them. And it also gave highlights on top, which the white pencil did for all of these as well. The colorless blender, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, did a great job. Um, beautiful blends. Um, so even though the colorless blender is wax, it worked beautifully on these. The pen, the same thing. The Faber-Castells work the best with the pen. Even though the pen says it is for wax pencils, you get the best results of that pen with the Faber-Castells. It is absolutely seamless. It is beautiful. Um, so the pen is beautiful with the fabric. So I just thought that was funny because the pen does clearly state formulated to blend wax-based colored pencils. So again, there's oil within these, but all pencils are wax. So think about that. But it's absolutely beautiful. So those are... The comparison on how each of these used or how each of these worked. My favorite method of blending is the colorless blender in general, unless I'm doing a floral. If I am doing a floral image, I do like to bring in my white pencils. And the reason why I do like to bring in my white pencils is because I like the scratchiness. You get these highlights when you use a white pencil to blend. And it's always at the tip. But you get these natural highlights. And that's what I like with the white pencil. When it comes to the pen, that's if I want it to be absolutely smooth. Now you saw when I was doing this, I had a scratch piece of paper because between the colors, you do have to scribble this. This is like the Dove blenders, the Stampin' Up blenders. Again, I just don't know what is in here. I'm smelling it. I think there's alcohol in here, to be very honest with you. It's what it smells like to me alcohol. Uh, there is an odor to it. So this is not odorless spirits. Okay. That's my guess. I don't know. Somebody out there may know. So you can say, I think 
all of these pencils are extremely comparable. I just get concerned when it comes to the Spectrum Noir, when it came to the pen, I really lost a lot of pigment. And I don't want to lose the pigment no matter what I'm using to blend, okay? All these sets to me are equal. I will post in the blog post for this and I will link to the blog post down below so that you can see what all of the prices are and how I broke them down in the beginning of the video. But again, you can rewatch that beginning if you're looking for prices. If you're looking for price points, Arteza, of course, is the best. Okay, Arteza does have the best price point. The second best price point is Blick, and then Prismacolor comes in next if you're basing it off of price points. But remember, whenever you get a set of colored pencils, you do not need to purchase the largest set. Notice how I paused with that. I am a victim of that. I like to have all of the colors. But if you want to try out the set first, Maybe you will not like the set. Again, I am a fan of colored pencils. They are my medium of choice. Okay, I have not met a colored pencil that I have not liked yet. Um, so keep that in mind. If you want to try out the Prismacolors or the Faber-Castells by the smaller sets, they are at that price point. If you go to the larger sets because you do want all of the colors, that's fine. They can be bought individually as well, and you'll have just those duplicates, but they're your favorites. You will go through them, okay? Just know that these are not available individually, your Artezas. Um, they are available as the sets. And these, the Spectrum Noirs, are not available individually as well. As you see, when it comes to all of, when I stamp an image, the two types of inks I will use are either Gina K Designs Amalgam Black or Ink on 3 Fade Out. They are my two favorite inks. I do like the Ink on 3 Black out as well for my black. But these are the two mains that I will use. And I may throw in Fog um, or Barely Beige from Simon Says and then also the Whisper from Gina K. But again, these are my top two. So if I want to do no line coloring, it's Ink on 3. And if I want to have a black, then it is the Gina K Amalgam. So I hope if you were looking for information, I hope this did help. Um, I hope this gave you some ideas. I hope this showed something for you um, so that you could make a decision if you are interested in getting in colored pencils. Now, again, these are just basic blends. I will be having more videos coming out to show you how I work with colored pencils, how I color with colored pencils. I will link to a couple videos somewhere around here um, in the past of videos that I have made using colored pencils, and then that can show you how I do work with them. So if you are interested in seeing more, you know if you want, you can subscribe, you can ring that bell so that you know the next video is live and ready for you, and by all means, hit that thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave those down below as well, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I do hope you enjoyed this. Again, I do hope it was helpful. For those of you that are already here and, have, yeah, and are my subscribers, I am truly grateful, and I say thank you always. I hope everyone's having a great day, but always remember what's most important, and it's important because we need to do it every single day. Always be creative.